China is in default on over a trillion dollars of debt owed to U.S. citizens, and the U.S. government, of course, ignores it. My colleague Andrew Hale recently wrote an article in the Hill detailing how the U.S. pays interest on 800 billion of treasuries held by China. So it's about 50 million dollars per day that we pay to China. Ironically enough, China is currently in default on over a trillion in sovereign debt. In other words, they owe us more than we owe them, and they are paying us precisely zero interest. The debt dates from the 1930s, borrowed from private investors and governments, and then defaulted by the Republic of China. After the communists took control, they kept the assets but ignored the debts, which violates centuries of international law. Now, if you take countries' assets normally, you have to take the debts along with it. For context, old sovereign bonds do not just evaporate. As Hale noted in his article, Germany made a reparations payment. For World War One in 2010, in 2015, Britain paid bonds issued in the 18th century. In fact, in 1987, the British government did receive payment on their Chinese sovereign debt, the same gold bonds, which they got in return for handing China access to British capital markets. Since, after all, governments in default cannot access foreign capital markets, that is another long-established precedent. The U.S., of course, is a different story. As always, we are the suckers who let it slide because our politicians don't have the balls to enforce American interests when it comes to China. Keep in mind, this is debt owed to American citizens, not to our government. So it's not our government's prerogative to ignore it. By the way, the communists didn't exactly win in China. We gave it to them, at least according to famous economist Gordon Tullock. Who actually worked for the thoroughly communist-infiltrated State Department in Tianjin, whilst they were handing the country to the communists. According to Tullock, once the war ended, the pro-communist Department of State got the land in Asia, while the anti-communist Department of Defense got the islands. Which is why Taiwan and Japan are not communist. The DoD stopped the State Department's communist proxies at the beach, and of course, it reframes the Korean War as a bureaucratic turf battle between state and DoD. So back to the loans. Exactly how much are they worth? The debts were gold denominated, which was common before FDR. So today they're worth between a trillion and 1.6 trillion. So up to double all of the U.S. debt China holds. Given the debts are not being serviced, of course, they continue accruing unpaid interest even as the U.S. continues paying China like a chump. So soon enough, they will be two trillion. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. If there's one thing Beijing is good at, it is demanding everybody else play by the rules that they themselves ignore. Meanwhile, weak American politicians and media carry China's water, apparently preferring a foreign dictatorship to their own people. It would be a nice change for our government to hold China accountable from trillion-dollar debts to say bat virus labs. Of course, that won't happen so long as Biden's president. We shall remain on our knees. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.